Let's look in detail about critical path method. CPM is a method used to estimate the minimum project duration, and determine the amount of scheduling flexibility on the logical network paths within the schedule model. The critical path is the sequence of activities that represents the longest path through a project, which determines the shortest possible project duration and has zero float. On any network path, the schedule flexibility is measured by the amount of time that a schedule activity can be delayed or extended from its early start date without delaying the project finish date, or violating a schedule constraint, and is termed, total float. Let's see how the activity node is represented in CPM. Each activity is mentioned in a rectangle where activity name is mentioned in the middle. Both top and bottom rows are split in three columns, whereas, Top left box represents early start date. Top middle box represents the duration of the activity. Top right box represents early finish date. Bottom left box represents late start date. Bottom middle box represents total float available for the activity. Bottom right box represents late finish date. Here is the example to better understand the critical path method. Before proceeding further the example, let's recall the reference notation for activities in critical path method, and is shown here. In this method we have four activities A, B, C, D and, having 5, 5, 10 and, 15 days of durations respectively. While sequencing the activities we found both B and C can be carried out parallel. Now let's find the critical path. Path ACD has 5 plus 10 plus 15 days that is equal to 30 days. Path ABD has 5 plus 5 plus 15 days that is equal to 25 days. The longest duration on which the project can be completed is 30 days. Hence ACD is the critical path. Now let's calculate the float for the path ABD. It has a float of 30 minus 25 days which is equal to 5 days. So the total float available for ABD is 5 days. Now let's start from leftmost activity A, to calculate early start and finish dates. Since the activity is part of critical path, there is no float available for the activity. Hence the early and late start day is 1, and the late start and end date is 5 days. Let's move on the path and go to activity B. The early start day for this is 6 which comes after end of activity A adding the float of 5 with this, we can calculate the late start date which is 6 plus 5, that is equal to 11. Early finish date is calculated by adding the duration of 5 with the early start date 6, and the value is 10. Late finish date can be calculated by adding duration of 5 with late start date 11, and the value is 15. Let's move to activity C. Since the activity C is part of critical path, there is no float available. Hence the early and late start dates are the same, and the value is 6. Similarly the early and late finish days will be 15. Same as activity C, activity D also falls on the critical path end, having zero float. Early and late start days are 16 and early, and late finish days are 30 days. This is how the critical path is calculated and can be applied to a number of tasks and paths. Hope this video helps to understand how the critical path is. Hope this video is helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share your comments. Stay subscribed for more knowledge sharing videos. Thank you for watching this video.